Welcome to Hogwarts, the school of becoming an oracle. Realizing what the symbol of the hat is, getting into symbology, sacred numerology. Why? Because God, the Holy Spirit, your born again double self, the seven spirits of God, the angels, they don't write you a letter. They will not talk to you that way. They talk through symbology. To become a master of symbology, numerology, sacred geometry, is to open and awaken your telepathy. Because when you begin to envision the, the tetrahedron filled with golden light and fire, this sends out a message to the higher ones. And then, as we begin to use our body and our actions as a prayer, we begin to communicate with the higher realms. <clears throat> so, giving yourself white sheets on your bed, cleaning your bathroom, cleaning your car, feeding the birds, loving your dog and your cat, wiping off your stairs, painting your front door, giving your door a new door handle, singing a song, writing a song, making a piece of art. These are communications to God and your higher self. Action is a prayer. We left the world of tongue worship. Many beautiful songs, many beautiful cathedrals worshiping God with tongues. And we were polarized. We didn't realize the corruption that could occur when we forgot that action is a prayer. You can praise all of the higher beings all day long, but when we go home and destroy our holy temple with pasteurized processed imitation food, drugs, alcohol, promiscuity, and thinking on the dark things, then our prayer is of death. So our prayer needs to be of life. And that is what the ruthless angels want to remind all of us. Angels are not kind. They will look at your actions and they will see if you are honest. You could with all your heart want to follow a higher being. But if our actions prove otherwise, then in their eyes, we are not honest and they won't talk to us. Talk to the angels by following life energy and seeking first the kingdom of God. And then suddenly you will be communicated with in magical ways. Today, we are communicating with Lori. Lori, look at the shadow of this beautiful lavender flower. So you have several energies that are communicating with you today. We're going to do a scrying reading for Lori. Scrying comes from the origin of the word scripture. Before the written word, there was nothing but symbology. That's why you see a lot of hieroglyphs and art everywhere in ancient stone because that's how God communicates the burning bush symbologies like the fish and animals. That's how God communicated. We translated that symbology into the written word. However, the written word could become corrupt. Even Jesus said the in the Matthew 23, he says, um, the interpreters of the law of God are liars, vipers. So we have to be careful about the written word. And that's why it's very important to hear from the unwritten word, which is the higher ones, the invisible ones, your help, your double self, the Holy Spirit, the seven spirits of God. So let's go play, Lori. I'm going to show you something that spirit wanted you to see. It was a piece of art that I made and I was in my shop today and spirit said, bring this for Lori today. So this is, um, let me turn this on. This is what spirit brought you. I'm gonna close the door here and here so you can see it glowing. This is, I call her my lavender girl and I'll turn the light on so you can see her better. But she has a rose. She has an amethyst and a diamond above her head. She has lavender flowers in her hair. She has a lavender uh, crystal at her uh, solar plexus. And it, her body makes a hallway. So let's light her up. You know, your soul glows in the dark and you can make it glow through having the heart of a child and through joy. So you can kind of see her glow here. 
and we'll turn the light on so you can see her a little bit better. But she um, reflects that we have a body that is tethered. And when we illuminate, we are free. And this illumination is a rose. And this color lavender is the color of the Holy Spirit. You ever wonder why some, some groups of people took the color lavender out of the color of the rainbow? The color lavender is the color of the Holy Spirit. It is the invisible word of God that manifests in your heart and makes you glow with illumination. So the color lavender is very important. And the green color, the emerald color that's connected to um, this piece is Emerald City. It is a promise that you are not in the upside down world. You are not in the waters of chaos. You have entered the halls of the magnetic mother, Mary Magdalene. It is Emerald, Auntie M. And when we enter into those halls, we are given a third eye, like a diamond. You may be a diamond or sapphire, saffron angel going back home, depending on the symbologies that we're going to see today. I'll tell you this, many of the symbols that we're seeing, <clears throat> let's enter the butterfly room. Nelson, you want to go out? Come here, Nelson. You can go out. Come on. Go on. Go out. Um, many of the symbologies that we're starting to see, um, are, are contacts from angels. Everybody's being contacted by some sort of group of beings. And most of you guys are being contacted by angels, angels. And these angels are kind to those who follow God and not kind at all to those who don't. So how this is how they are. They're like the ancient one from Dr. Strange where Dr. Strange realized he had a double born again self that was invisible and could travel through the cosmos and do many great things. And he bent down on his knees and he said, teach me. And she looked at him and she said, no. Because there are people who don't realize that their actions are a prayer and they will not listen to spirit. They just won't. So she kicked him out, threw him out, really. And he laid outside her door for days. And she saw that he would be obedient in the storm, in the wind, and the rain. And would endure all the hardships outside of her door. And when she saw that he was willing to go through such torture, to hear truths that he denied for so long, she allowed him in and she made him live a humble life learning. This is what it's like to enter into the halls of the angels. You will learn and you will be set free. But learning is emptying your cup. Hello, TikTok. How are you today? Let's see if my birdie's awake. <laughs> <laughs> and so welcome to Forest Fairy. Forest Fairy is a place where we go into the forest of our mind and transform from an earthbound tree that cannot move to a flying being that ascends above the earth, above the forest, seeing the bigger picture. And we have a lot of funny things in this room. This is These are the robots. And our robots are here to remind us that the, our earth reality is dominated by artificial intelligence and the written word and things that we believe are true. But the invisible realm is like, tisk tisk. not so. If you're bound mentally or physically by this earth, you will be bound by its laws. But if you hear our voice from the ethereal ones, you will not be bound by physical laws. You will be bound by ethereal laws. And ethereal laws... <clears throat> gives you power and the robot says uh-uh I don't believe it because it's not in the algorithm it's not written down I can't wikipedia it I can't google it I can't read about it from masters like Zachariah Sitchin uh Zachariah Sitchin here in the earth and they and so we put robots in timeout okay grandpa goes in timeout he says oh, I didn't hear about that when I was growing up well grandpa 
Welcome to the new age of Aquarius. So we have Christmas trees, we have angels, we have all kinds of colorful things wrapped around this room like a blanket around our body as a communication to our higher self that we see and we are ready to hear. So Lori, welcome to your beautiful reading today. Here's your beautiful luminous emerald and green, um, emerald and um, lavender rose, which reflects your illumination. And this was a lavender crystal sent to you. And this was the picture that was sitting in front of me when I was talking to you on the phone. And this does look like Dr. Strange, doesn't it? A student who sits at the, at the immortal ones, the master, the letter M up there, and her arms opening up like a scroll, washing him with memory. You know, water holds memory, ancient waters. Ooh. You guys want to take a trip with me to Antarctica? Did you know that the, the, the ice out there is emerald in color? Mm -hmm. We could go chip some of that ice and eat it. Ancient waters. What happens when you allow ancient waters to enter into your body that is 75% water and water holds memory? Maybe we get some ancient truths that download into our consciousness. Maybe. These living waters are spiritual waters. And so we're entering into a new kingdom, the kingdom of mirrors. And <clears throat> we are leaving the male-dominated world. We are going through the triquetra. These are pieces of art that I created for over the years. See the invisible person in the middle? We're becoming invisible. Male on the right, female on the left. This invisibility is our power. And we are being ignited through fire. And this fire energy at first gives us a black raven, but then the black raven changes to the white holy dove when we go through the divine marriage, flesh and spirit. It activates our DNA, it does. Mm -hmm. Male and female sharing waters, flesh and spirit breaking out of the cage of this world and transforming into the beautiful butterfly. It's a great time to be alive. <clears throat> we have the yellow brick road here, but nobody's on it. Who we can put on there? Well, we have to find out. Let's put the yellow brick road over here. Here's your yellow brick road. Someday I wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops. You have the lion with the crown. You're probably going through your crown chakra. Of course you are. Triketra. Aha! The rabbit. Your invisibility, my darling. Mushroom. Transmuting jerk energy. You walk into Walmart, you better transmute. Have a friend who's a jerk? You might want to cut them off. Have a lover or some family member that keeps coming around trauma dumping on you? Sorry, it's time to be ruthless. Cut them out of your memory. Don't indulge and engage even in your own self or this world. People who follow death and lies and the written word, ah, well, well, they're not going to go to a place where they become powerful. We are going to transmute them. You're going through the divine marriage, flesh and spirit. You have an emerald ring here and a ring that has a dragonfly on it. Dragonfly is a message from the spirit world. The dragonfly has a shape of the letter M and W, the master of the water. It is the fourth heart chakra. It's Emerald City. You have three Emerald City coins. One, two, three. It's your triquetra. Ah, oh, you're going through the triquetra. You do have the star. This is something you should be imagining quite often to your as a communication to your double self, which is the star tetrahedron. You may have something attacking you. Anytime I see the red shoes, this is the red slippers. Um, the Wicked Witch wants Dorothy's shoes. This is your soul. If you have something attacking you, it could be yourself. It could be an energy that you haven't transmuted or forgiven. It could be your own emotions, your own thoughts, or your own actions, but it could also be something else. So we'll look into that, okay? 
Away above the chimney tops, that's where you find me. Let's anoint your peace. Let's anoint your peace with a little bit of lavender and rose. A healthy human being resonates about 70 to 100 hertz. If you have a compromised immune system, your frequency lowers to about 60. When we are about to die, our frequency is about 25 hertz. Why don't you go to the doctor and why don't they have linen sheets? Oh, because it costs too much money. Well, that's funny because linen has 5,000 hertz frequency and many gurus and masters who understand frequency, your bio field, your Taurus field, they often wear rose essential oil, frankincense essential oil, and either 100% cotton, which only has 100 hertz frequency, or linen, which has 5,000 hertz frequency, which raises the frequency of your body, makes you healthy, and not only makes you healthy, but makes other people who are near you healthy. Why don't we sleep with linen sheets? Why don't they know this? Well, well, I know it, and I am illuminated, and I am light as a feather, and I am not sick. I, my frequency is very high. I have the heart of a child, and that's where my power... Ooh, comes from <laughs> is the heart of a child so look at my little antennas my antennas reflect that i can hear and i can hear above my head your double self is like a a, a line that extends above your head like an antenna so here we go spirit thank you for contacting vicky Lori's mother and if Lori's mother has anything to say to Vicky, I mean, if Vicky has anything to say to Lori, and all the spirit guides, of course, have already come forward to talk to Lori. Um, Lori, we are all but children here, um, and and we are all learning to wear a little mushroom above our head and grow our ears to hear that voice and so don't we're, we don't need to be hard on ourselves it's almost like they're already starting to talk to me before i've even finished your art don't be hard on yourself we're all young we could be a hundred years old and in the eyes of the masters we are babies so the only thing they want is for us to realize there is an invisible world there is a spirit world and they want us to hear them and obey them why? Because we will eventually become them. Because we will become mirrors of them. Because your born-again self is an immortal body that wants us to be like them so we can maintain consciousness and things like that. Anyway, Spirit already sent me a song for you. When somebody loved me Everything was beautiful Every hour we spend together lives within my heart. Ooh. And when she was sad, I was there to dry her tears. And when she was happy, so was I. When she me through the summer and the fall we had each other that was all just she and i together like it was meant to be and when she was lonely i was there to comfort her and I knew that she loved me. You have a dragon. You have invisible ones. You have um, um, a somebody telling you that you have entered into a new land there's a castle 
you have an invisible face, you have a tetrahedron above your head, you have a, te a star tetrahedron here, you have um, a mother here talking. Um, <clears throat> she's like testing, testing, one, two, three with a microphone, and then... Um, <laughs> And then she's um, she's holding a mirror, and um, and there's something about some sorrow, like I'm sorry. And then there's something about a dark, like almost like a dark angel was in front of her face, and um, Um, and then she's holding like a bag of groceries and it's almost like, I don't know what she's saying about that, but it's almost like she's saying, um, food can take us away from God. Um, it's a, it's a dark angel that's holding a bag of groceries and then the bag of groceries turns into a dark house. And this is all about food, how food affects our connection to God. You have a bull here. Um, is it a bull? No. It's a deer. This is the body of Christ. You have a you have a word down here. You have a, a language down here. It says uh, R something L L A H. Um. Let's see. <clears throat> okay. It says Lord, and then it has um, something. Um, okay, uh, so I'm seeing this a lot in many in many of of everyone's readings um, that there is an artificial intelligence. Oh my! Th uh, the spirits that are coming here to tell you something about it's it's your mother. So, okay, let me show you what she's saying. So here she's like this. This is your face. This is her putting her hand over your face. This is her literally looking at you and talking with her mouth open like this. This is her, this Lord word. I don't know if this is good or bad. I really don't. Did Jesus work with artificial intelligence? I, I have seen symbols of this. So Lord is, is a company called Lord. It is Microsoft Mouse. And they are bouncing our consciousness and have the ability through nanobots to take our mind and download our consciousness remotely in order to live forever. But here's the question. Do we want to live forever here? There's other places to go, right? And so why, why is this being brought forward for many of us? I think they're trying to explain a little further for me because I really, I really didn't know and I really still don't know what I believe or what I think about this. But let's look at the symbologies and, and be able to read what's going on here. So it's like your mother is coming forward through a, a myriad of ways here to say, protect your mind at this time. Seek first the kingdom of God. And there was an angel here who, through sound, was showing you a piece of paper that you were holding with a kingdom on it. See that that's a castle. Seven-pointed seven castle. It's a place. Here. And then this is you. Your face is invisible. You have a tetrahedron above your head like this. And you're holding on to this paper like this. And you have a dress on like this. And your leg is going forward like this. And your foot looks like this. And then your other foot is behind it like this. So, but, but there's somebody over here blowing a horn like uh, using a megaphone here. So you have so many people here. You have a lot of people in the spirit realm. Hold on. 
um, somebody's funny. They're like, can she hear me? Testing, testing. Um, so here, okay. Here's somebody. They're like talking. They have a book. We are in a new book. They're giving you a oak leaf. From an oak leaf, a tree, tree. Um, they have a hat over their head that looks like a spaceship. Um, they are wearing old clothing from a long time ago. They are um, standing on a podium, speaking, and then there's this symbol, and it looks like this. And then out comes this lightning, like this striking at the piece of paper that you're holding here and this is and then there's an old place down here an old mind and a pyramid down there and here you are and a rainbow over your head and clouds okay this is about your mother telling you about how there is a company called lord they're Microsoft Mauser who are making nanobots and they're they're going to be downloading or uploading your memories and everything that you are onto an iCloud. So um, what she's doing is she's protecting your head with a tetrahedron. And so let's look into the symbologies and see, because this is happening to your biofield. They're literally doing things. And so, all right. So here is somebody whose eye looks like this and their mouth looks like this and they're invisible, right? And, but their face isn't their face. There's an angel here. This angel has a rainbow over their head with clouds. I keep seeing this. And their, their legs go like this. And so this is about protection. They're protecting our heads at this time. So. You know what I see is a battle. It's a battle over your consciousness. It's a battle over flesh and spirit. It's a big battle that you have. That whomever is talking to you has so they do talk with the written word. There's pieces of paper being torn in half. That there's um um. There's a doorway. There's these men standing here. There's secret doorways. There's Anubis, a dog, man. They're little. They are guarding this door. They don't want us to enter. It's a do it's a doorway that's supposed to open and we have we don't we don't know it. Many people will not be able to get through it because they don't know it. Something about taking our... Distra when we're distracted, this is a, a man, a bearded man. His head has the written word on it, like a scroll. And he's distracted by truths of this world. A male person is your physical body, physical world. This world is considered male, it's considered electric. The female is considered magnetism. It's She's the invisible ones. The male is looking into an invisible window. 
The mind of the male has black and white words. This is the mental inventory. Our mental inventory tells us how to label things, how to understand God or religions, things like that. And it is um, an absolute um, communication that we need to cut um, what we think we know and delete all the mental inventory that we learned from this lower realm, which is really artificial intelligence. And so when we empty our cup, we become invisible and we create the star te tetrahedron. Yes, you had the star tetrahedron. That was, it's right here. So it looks like that. And then you have that right there. <clears throat> and so this person is sitting on a chair like this. And, um, and it's a man like this. And underneath there's people in a prison. I know what this is. Um, it's a metaphor of Atlas who is stuck under the earth carrying the weight of the world um, until we go through a flipping. And then, and then when Atlas flips upside down around the other way, then Atlas turns to the word salt. It's a purification process. And the sun flips its polarity every 11 years. And it's a magnetic polar shift. And this magnetic polar shift shifts us from the physical mind and the mental inventories that we've been programmed to the invisible world, invisible world, invisible world, invisible world, invisible world. Yeah. So, so you have this beautiful woman here. I believe this is you. And she is gorgeous. Her face makes up the sun. She has this most amazing crown on her head. The crown keeps shooting out rays of the sun this way. Um, she holds her hand. She, she is the carrier of the crowns. She has a, she has a few crowns. She makes a mudra with her hand like this. A mudra. She has something on her shoulder like this. She says she's the dragon. This is the eye of the dragon here. She is your dragon. She will manifest as a person. She will fight you. She's not nice. We must delete all the inventory we were taught and allow them to teach us the invisible truth or else they're very ruthless about it. Um, she is saying, don't worry about the eye cloud. She says, worry about your crown. She says, don't let anyone take your crown. You have your mother Care, uh, uh, putting this over your head as a protective symbol. She says this: the triangle is a tetrahedron that can, can protect you from this battle over your consciousness and your mind. This angelic looking being is writing on a piece of paper with a feather. You need to become an oracle. You must become like a scryer. You must hear the words of spirit and be able to teach it and do the great work become an alchemist so she says the reason that i'm sitting is it's a it's a reflection of learning so when you have a, a god or a goddess sitting it's a time of stepping into a school of mastery in front of a desk and you're actually being shown or told that you are a protected one when you have the seal over your forehead, which you do, you are protected. You can enter into the invisible school that most cannot. Most people who get a reading from me know, know that they have entered into something they're not sure of. That's why they're so, they so want to um, get a reading from me because they want to know where they are. And it looks like we come from artificial intelligence and we grow out of this artificial world and we begin to come out of a prison dominated by a false god. So the real god is different. So you have this weird, strange house-looking, church-looking place 
Oh, uh, they're telling you that you've entered the halls of Solomon, the two pillars of Solomon. You've entered Solomon's temple. And Solomon's temple is about um, the sun dominating the moon, spirit dominating flesh, and you have flipped. So they want you to wear clothing that reflects your obedience. So I think you need, look at your face makes a wizard sleeve. Um, and your face are is the hands and the knowledge of the, of the higher beings. They want you to prove that you want to follow them by what you wear. So I would go out and get a linen cloak. And it's, it's something like uh, a jacket or something that you can wear over your clothing so you don't have to change everything into linen, but it's a cloak. And you put this linen cloak over your body as a reflection of obedience to the ones who want you to become a master. So sometimes I give you guys a reading and I'm and you hear, oh, well, you need to become an oracle. You need to become a scryer. You need to let go of your mental inventory. You need to put a fresh leaf over your head or your navel to, and also this is a symbol of hunting for negative ions, feeding your biofield. So all of these symbols that are being brought forward for you is that you died of an old world and rebirthed into a new one. And there's laws though. If we bring the Voldemort up here, see it says E equals MC squared. Um, what they want you to know is if we seek first the, the truths of this world, our mental inventory, our emotions, our memories, and all of that, if we keep looking back, we'll, we will be bound by gravity. E equals MC squared. But if we obey the ethereal ones, your double born again self, the dragon, the angels, the spirit guides, the invisible ones, well, you will not be bound by those laws and you will have power to do great and mighty things you will become the master that walks on water ah uh -huh. and she's like she's i don't know who this is but she has a sense of humor she's like preach it uh teach it put a megaphone this turned into a megaphone she's like ah uh -huh, megaphone we're gonna we're gonna say that out loud she says let the the how this megaphone is not on the mouth it's on the heart your heart isn't focused on formless formless form that your heart is focused on formlessness oh she wants you to sing 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 the music of your heart sing the language of your heart light language yes light language what what that's what i saw i saw so much language and i didn't understand it it's like the the voice of the angels or something so this house that we came from was a jack-in-the-box you have a jack-in-the-box here a clown and it was not the real world. And doing, 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 doing. And we were in a box. And it was uh, not world, real. So we just have to keep going. You did come from the waters. And you grew up and learned. And now you're going to become a master. But right now you're a student just like as we all are. And your body makes the eye of God. So you are learning from the eye of God, not the eye of the eye, AI Lord, artificial intelligence Lord, Microsoft Mouser. Yeah, the mouse, the Mickey Mouse, that energy there. So uh, yeah, here you are and your invisibility is at hand you need to realize you're in solomon's temple you have now entered into the world of the angels believe me they are not nice they will be nice if you listen and if you don't they are not nice they will kick you out and they will um They won't feel sorry for you. They don't, that's just how they are. So what it looks like is like this. You've entered into a kingdom where your, your hat is becoming tall. So this person's hat is flat like a spaceship. This is artificial intelligence. As the hat gets taller, we get downloads like information into our head, a scroll from the invisible world, that man. Your physical self is male, 
looking at the invisible and absorbing new information and deleting old inventory. If we hear a message from the spirit guides to get into crystals, to become an oracle, to follow negative ions, sacred geometry, and become an alchemist, we cannot be, be a jerk and say, oh, well, that doesn't, it doesn't say that in the Bible, you know, or if you're into the Quran or Buddhism or whatever, it doesn't say that there. Um, many people judge the Holy Spirit. The oracle was written in the Bible 23 times. If any man speak, let them speak as, a, as an oracle. And Jesus said, if you believe me, you can become as powerful as me and more. He spoke to the dead. He raised the dead. He prophesied the future. Become like him. And so learning to hear from the invisible ones and stepping into your mastery, the master that walks on water, is the formula. If we are like this, oh, no, 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 no. No, my dear, my dear. You have no idea what you're talking about. Because that is not what I have learned in my history class about the Willy Wonka um, could, cannot have um, uh, Oompa Loompas doesn't come from Oompa Loompa land. I have, I have studied my history. And so when we have this arrogance, we we're so tethered to this physical world. We refuse the voice of the angels in our higher self because we're just like, no, 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 no. That can't be true. No, 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 no. Like if somebody came up to you and said, you know, I can raise the dead, you'd laugh. Or, hey, did you know I could fly? You'd be like, ha. And then they flew and you're like, oh. You know, so you have to be like Charlie. And Charlie is somebody who reached out and grabbed the golden ticket. There were five tickets given out and God gives five golden crowns. Your higher self has the crown that is that is has not been placed on your head yet. Not yet. Because we have to learn. So basically, your head is being filled with new information. That information will grow your frequency. That frequency grows the corona crown into an adepthood that gives you the crown. The five crowns are the crown of truth, the crown of rejoicing, the crown of everlasting life or the incorruptible crown. And I don't remember, I think there's a crown of peace. So let's learn about some of this before we go forward to your next piece. So the triketra is um, the triangle that you keep, that's showing a lot up a lot in your piece. And this triangle is good and bad. So for instance... It can be the dunce hat of the fake artificial intelligence. It could be a false god. But the triangle that's above your head right here is about you um, having the fire of the Holy Spirit above your head. All right. And then here's an angel above your head that I think is your mother. And then um, all of these other symbols, including the leaf, is about negative ions. So what we're going to learn about right now is your biofield. How your biofield is connected to your physical body and how to feed your spirit by feeding and empowering your biofield. Your biofield has a few names biofield, torus field, toroid, toroidal field. And you can purchase books like this. This is tuning the human biofield through frequency and sound. My higher self says, lay in a bath. I have spring water that comes out of my bath. I was told to live here uh, because I live above springs. And this is clear spring water. So I was led to the emerald waters on the emerald coast. And I live on a place on an ancient map called Emer the Emerald Mound. And this is a place where I had to learn how to um, open my heart chakra, my green heart chakra. So I came to Emerald City in my own way to learn how to activate my heart chakra, to feed my biofield, and by extension, to step into my mastery so that I can make the great crossing from my physical body to my eternal body without being caught in a net. Jesus said, let us cast our nets and be fishermen of men. And what is the net? Your ethereal net is a torus field. It flows in and out of itself. Everything has a torus field, even the sun. And as the sun flips its magnetic polarity, 
so do you. You're just unaware of it. Many people are unaware that they have a born-again, double, invisible self. Religions will tell you that being born again means that you have repented of your sins and Christ has become part of your body. You're, you drink the blood of Christ like a vampire and you become holy, right? Well, there's more to it. Your double invisible self is actually real. Shamans, gurus, and many other masters know about this. And so when you see symbols of the Wicked Witch trying to take the shoes of Dorothy, for you, it's it's artificial intelligence that um, that seems to um, be pulling your feet down here. See how both of your feet, here's your feet, here's your knee, there's your foot. Here's your foot, here's your foot, here's your foot. So artificial intelligence created this reality and we're needing to ascend to other truths. And what? It, how does it look? Your biofield is, is an individual and a collective thing. So the earth has a, has a biofield and a torus field and we're all connected. Everything's connected, okay? So there are times when we're in the upside down world. So think of the character 11 from Stranger Things, Papa. Papa reflects lead, P reflects lead, A reflects gold. The, the number 11 reflects salt. The element of salt is 11. We are here to transform from lead to gold through a purification process of salt, which is 11. The sun flips its polarity every 11 years. Eventually, we go to the 11th house, which is the 11th age of Aquarius. So, when we are down here in the upside down world, we are sent to hell. It's not literally a place of burning fire. It's a place of healing. It's called the helix. It's called the helios or the helium. And it's it's the lower realm. So, when Dorothy figured out that the great and mighty Wizard of Oz used artificial intelligence to make her afraid, he was full of hot air balloon, helium. Dorothy was in this lower realm, the W. And the W is the Wicked Witch of the West. So the letter WWW is the web, the wattage, and the um, water. You're in the water. And we get there because we, we did something we forgot. We forgot to seek first the kingdom of God. Secondly, we forgot that as the sun flips, we flip. Uh, we forgot some things. So Dorothy allowed her dog to not follow the divine order of God, which is God spelled backwards. She allowed her mind to go into the garden of the reptilian wicked witch. And she began to fight with the wicked witch who threatened to destroy her dog. Your dog is always a spirit guide. Your higher self is an animal, like a holy dove, a lion, something like that. So that she allowed her, she sent her double to, see dog is double, D-O. She sent her dog to a lower realm, a realm of anger, self-importance, all kinds of terrible things. And because she fought and had arrogance, she was, her Taurus field was sent to a tornado. So we have Dor, Tor. Dorothy's Taurus field was sent to a tornado. This tornado sent her to a reality that was not in her favor. The Wicked Witch of the West. Why is this symbol a curse? Because you go to school to learn spelling. Spelling is straight. A, B, C, like this. But cursive writing is cursive. goes like this. So the angles or the angels know about sacred geometry really being M, W, like this. This is taking a circle and perfecting it through sacred geometry into straight edges 
This is becoming a master of the net. This is what Jesus was. He was the master that walked on water. So when Dorothy followed Glenda, Glenda reflected a energy that manifests inside many of us. It's a star system. The Corona Borealis is about the crown. Corona means crown. The Corona Borealis looks like a crown. It has seven points like the hat or the crown of Mithra. And it's called the Seven Sisters with Seven Stars. Now, from a telescope, the Corona Borealis looks like a pink bubble surrounded by an emerald color. Glenda, wearing the crown, came down in a pink bubble surrounded by an emerald color. Emerald City is the green heart chakra. Dorothy had to get to the letter M. Emerald City, where Auntie M was. So the Wicked Witch of the West flipped to Emerald City. And this is what Jesus was, the master that walked on water. Jesus Christ having 11 letters in his name. He left the Bible at 12. He came back and found 12 disciples, which went to the number 13. And ultimately, the number 14 is the number of the Holy Spirit. So it's really a story of Osiris and Odin, even. So oh, the one eye of Odin went into the mystical waters, the letter W. Osiris's body is, was cut 14 times, seven for him, seven for her, the Holy Spirit. Dorothy walked the yellow brick road in the land of Oz. She had to walk up to find the seven colors of the rainbow. The seven colors of the rainbow to fly like a pretty little bluebird over the seven colors of the rainbow is the eye of the needle. This is the eye of the needle. It makes a fire vesica piscis. It's the Holy Spirit. You go through the eye of the needle to get to the kingdom of heaven. Right? So Iris is the eye of God. The black eye is the curse of Cain, the black pupil. Noah had white eyes. Our original eye was white. We saw through the eyes of spirit and the eye of God. So we were sent to the curse of Cain, which is the canine, which is the dog, which is why Dorothy had the dog. It's kind of like Harry Potter's God and Father was Sirius Black, the dog. He was in Azkaban for 12 years, 12 hours, 12 months, 12 zodiac signs. And Sirius Black is a star system known as Sirius B, the dog star, but it's really about a curse. So a curse of writing, a spell, and the water goes up like a musical note somewhere over the rainbow. And the land of Oz goes to the land of Iris, and this is Osiris. Osiris, the land of Oz, goes to Iris, the goddess of the rainbow. And so when we leave seven continents, seven seas, seven days in a week, seven colors to the rainbow, seven wounds of Christ, seven spirits of God, seven chakras, we realize that the seven trumpets and the seven seals and the seven heavens and the seven generational curses of Cain are connected to our energy centers, which is in your biofield. Your biofield has seven energy centers, and these seven energy centers are points of drainage that feed the matrix like a battery. And the reptilians and the archons feed off of you, and they want to distract you and fill your head with false inventory so that you don't ever realize that you can be powerful and fly over the rainbow, Dorothy. Like a pretty little bluebird, except you wear a blue dress. There's Dorothy. All right. And so the Egyptian bird is the bluebird that flies. And so this is an allegory. Your seven points of drainage can turn into seven points of power through the seven spirits of God. And will take you out of the seven generational curses of Cain. So, this is what it is. So, the 14 pieces of Osiris' body is Osiris. Now, artificial intelligence will take these truths and use it for dark reasons. So, for instance, Iris spelled backwards is Siri. Or maybe the IRS takes 
iris out, but they like to take the eye out. So there's secrets to it. People who took over the color of the rainbow took the color purple out because that's the color of the Holy Spirit. And the number of the Holy Spirit is 14. If you look up stories of Elvis and many pastors and ministers and priests do terrible things to children who are 14 years old. Elvis Presley ordered little 14-year-old girls all the time. He, he only wanted little 14-year-old girls because there was a battle against the Holy Spirit. There is a battle against your spirit and the Holy Spirit. They don't want the Holy Spirit to give us the invisible eye. They want to keep us in the black eye. They want us here, not here. This is the white rabbit. Follow the white rabbit, Neo. It is a sound, it is a frequency, and it's an awakening. So we're awakening. So wake up. <laughs> and how do I know that they're trying to take your soul? One more thing before we go to your second piece. Because in 2001, the sun flipped its magnetic polarity. And during that time, the two towers fell. The sun flips every 11 years. The number of the sun is 111. Now, the two towers sat in front of a body of water. And this makes the letter M and the letter W. This looks like your Taurus field. M and W. An apple with a bite out of it is technology that eats your biofield. So if, if an apple is biting you down here, then you, have to, you need to go study negative ions. Negative ions feeds your biofield. Positive ions hurts your biofield. Technology like cell phones, cell towers, televisions, microwaves, air conditioned offices or homes, things like that are full of positive ions and they hurt you. They hurt your double. So negative ions comes from heat and salt or nature. You are a natural negative ion emitter. You have salty tears, salty sweat, and your body is warm. Heat and salt makes negative ions. However, if we eat too many toxic foods and eat too much sugar and we don't eat Himalayan sea salt that has over 84 minerals, then we are starving our spirit. So people who create black magic to make sure that you do not go to Emerald City and activate your double self and your biofield, they do things in this physical world to create damage collectively to of us who are, are ignorant to these things. So as above, so below, they know as below, so above, they can affect the spirit world. So your double born again self is your twin flame, the twin towers. And the number 11 is a very deep subject, not only about how the sun flips every 11 years or how the element of salt is 11 or how um, the age of Aquarius is 11. It is very much connected to your androgynous double invisible self. You have 23 chromosomes, which is 46 doubled. But if you, have, if you are neither male nor female, you are considered 22, which is 1111. You do not copulate. You are androgynous, which is like the Statue of Liberty, who looks both male and female with a seven-pointed crown like Mithra, where Mithra's mother, Mary, self-impregnated. So they are the androgynous immortal ones anyway. So... Here's the two towers that fell in 2001 that makes MW1111. And they knew this was going to happen because on the 1976 album of the Super Tramp album, you can see a woman holding the two towers on a platter. And the word Super Tramp goes like this, and the letter U is cut off. The letter P goes here, da 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 da, and put that in a mirror. It makes 911, the two towers, 1976. So the black magic is derail trains, burn buildings, cause wars, cause chaos, so that we, when it's time for us to awaken and ascend and step into our mastery, we forsake it through distraction, through fear, through hopelessness, through clinging to a false religion and, and wanting to group along with a whole bunch of people who believe the same way to feel safe. 
forsaking the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to tell you things. Many of us tell the Holy Spirit to shut up because certainly that couldn't be the truth. We judge the Holy Spirit. We judge our higher selves because of these religions and because of the written word. The unwritten word from the holy ones and the ascended ones have things to tell us. And so if we listen, we will see that the sun flipped again between 2012 and 2013. And then this year, the sun is flipping again 2023 to 2024. So this year is the year of the white water rabbit. This is the Triketra. It is the eye of Noah and the days of Noah returning. It is a beckoning for all of us to turn into the white water rabbit. White rabbit equals 11 and is white as salt. It is about beckoning us to become invisible, saying out loud, I am nothing and yet everything. I am no one and yet everyone. And I'm going to go from the white water rabbit, the letter W, to the dragon. And the dragon is the fire. This is the fire of the Holy Spirit going through a divine marriage. So going to Emerald City without the letter M falling over. We are now going to keep that up by seeking first the kingdom of God and not allowing ourselves to fear. Maintaining the heart of a child, keeping our lamp lit, and maintaining our joy. The heart of a child. If the world is on fire, oh well. If people are killing everybody, oh well. We don't care because we're done with the distractions. We're done with the lies. We're done with artificial intelligence feeding off of our double. The Wicked Witch of the West wanting to feed off of our shoes, our soul. I don't see that you are being fed upon. I don't see that you... uh, What I see is a, a little bit of artificial intelligence affecting your biofield and you need to feed your biofield and you need to go out in nature with the leaf and be with nature sun gaze this is a sun disc above your head with your eyes closed breathe in the negative ions and feed your double self because now i'm going to show you what you're really here for Lori. you have a lot of people on the spirit realm who are there for you and are trying to help you to awaken during this time so you've entered into the halls of, of those who want you to be more than what we've been our entire lives. It's a new page. So, um, you can feel the eyes upon you as you're shaking off the cold. Um, you can act like it doesn't bother you, but you just want to explode. Here I am on the road again. And there I am. Up on a stage, here I go, playing songs again, there I go, turn the page. So you're turning a page, for sure. Through the 
night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave? Or mm -hmm. the land of the free and the home of the brave? I swear these characters are talking to me like uh, we're watching a, a cartoon where uh, 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 there's this Christ looking being that's holding a pretty little blue bird and the little blue bird is like tweet 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 and then this bird is like how long can I, do I have to hold this clock here and then these little elves going or coming out of these doorways and all these doorways you've entered into the halls of you've entered the into the Egyptian book of the gates and um and so um, so follow the white rabbit is basically what it's saying. Um, we have to cross the river sticks willingly. What does that mean? Well, you're Frodo, you have the ring of power, which is this physical body and to throw the ring of power into Mordor isn't necessarily, um, isn't, a, it's about the deathless death. So Odin hung from a tree for nine days. Jesus died on the tree. And the allegory of dying before you die is you believe nothing now. You feel nothing. You don't believe anything about yourself, you were told. You don't believe anything about this world, you were told. You are now obedient to the, the, the eternal ones. You uh, are going to drink from the Holy Grail. You are a bird. You have a very much bird-like energy. Now, this goes all the way back to the angels and the ones who are descendants of the angels are connected to the Merkaba and Ezekiel's wheels, and you have all of that. And there's a little warning from you from this Christ-like being saying, uh, anyone who has the Pinocchio knows um, they, can't, they can't come up here. We can't bring the Pinocchio up there. And so part of this initi initiation and the great crossing is, is 
Don't bring the Voldemort to Hogwarts. Don't bring the past to heaven. Don't bring low self-worth or self-importance up there. It's time to go ahead and fully rebirth into your true self, which is somebody on a throne. Now, notice this person on the throne is cut. The rabbit is here. And follow the white rabbit. There's your rabbit. But the feet or the soul is in the water sticks. This is the river of forgetfulness. Does it mean you're going to lose your memory? No. It means that you're no longer going to train or perpetuate a habitual way of thinking about yourself in the world. It's about relinquishing your old ways of thinking, your old thoughts, your own ways, and beginning to seek first the kingdom of God. This is your purification. It's your death and rebirth. Now, according to this reading, this is who you are. You are like a fairy godmother. So you take the young girl who's ready to cross over. And there's an anointing bottle here. You push them. You give them the eternal waters. You are also somebody who cuts somebody with scissors. Somebody who's, who believes lies. You, they get cut. Um, and and they could either believe the eye or the voice of God or not. And they're dragon people. But the, these dragons, they don't have mouths the way that we are. They have beaks. Uh, they are a beaked dragon. They are about the cloud and the rainbow. They're the cloud people. They can be a human, but they are a place they speak invisibly. There's an elephant also. They say that they're connected to uh, Hinduism and all kinds of ancient Ganesh. Um, they, are, they are very ancient, very, and they don't want a body. They don't want worship. They don't want anything except for all of us here to finally hear and obey that truth so that we can go up and, and be up. So the rabbit ear is a staff. That this person, which is you, is holding, which is the rabbit ear is about, um, let me see, I'm going to turn this on differently. Yeah. Um, there we go. The rabbit ear is the eye. It is one ear in the physical, one ear in heaven. One eye in the physical, one eye in heaven. But mostly crossing over the river Styx is being given a coin and the lady necessity gives you a coin and and look at this door there's a hall that you're entering here it's a doorway it's a secret doorway and the secret doorway has two people in there two towers two souls and uh, the face of, or the hand of Christ looks like a bunny rabbit. And he's like, follow the white rabbit. <laughs> he says, I'm the white rabbit. He says, uh, white rabbit is, it has 11 letters. Jesus Christ has 11 letters. The white is the purification. It is the two towers. The ears of the rabbit makes the two towers. It is a hand looks like a rabbit. It is the hand of God following the hand of God, basically. So um, it looks like there's somebody else here. Also, that's with you, and you, you are all these people. You're the body of Christ. You're an ancient dragon, motherly dragon person, uh, a, but you're a bird. I would have to say the dragon people, they are the seraphim angels. They look like dragons. They look like um, they, um, anyway, they're, they're the original Adam and Eve before Eve was cut from Adam because the story of Adam and Eve was that Adam was given dominion over the stars and under the ocean a being that has the ability to go under the ocean and up to the stars has to be able to fly and so th these are the these dragons they go under the water they go up to and so the never-ending story with that good luck dragon the white good luck dragon is something about who you were at one time so you're seated here with praying hands this is the praying mantis god and there's a lot of energies here. There's the, not just the holy dove, but the um, the hummingbird is the only bird that can fly backwards. And it is uh, time travel, your ability to time travel. 
So you're a messenger. You do many things. Your spirit and your you do many things. And so you do something to open somebody's third eye to help them to make the great crossing. Now, this is called the great crossing. This is in shamanism too. So um, let's talk about the great crossing. So to understand your great the great crossing, we have to understand how your double works, how your double talks. Um, you have a double self that is a massive energy. We are aware only of its hard outer casing. We become aware of our ethereal side by allowing our intent to shift to it. When we do breathing exercises and remote view our past and breathe the power that we gave away in our past, this is called recapitulation. Scientology calls it auditing. The recapitulation helps to dissolve our preconceptions, but it takes skill and concentration to reach your double. This is your born again self. Right now, you are using your ethereal part to some extent, meaning that you, you can sense something, but you're not sure. You are half asleep, but must, but some part of you is awake and alert. Otherwise, you wouldn't have asked for a reading from me. It can hear and sense you, and you have to hear and sense it. Be warned that there is considerable danger involved in releasing the energy that is locked within us because the double is vulnerable and can easily become injured in the process of shifting our awareness to it. For instance, when we begin to unlock our double out of a cage like a bird, it can become angry because it realizes or has realized that it has been caged, that we have not used it. And you may feel a lot of anger. All right. You can inadvertently create an opening in your ethereal net and lose vast amounts of energy, precious, precious energy that is necessary to maintain a certain level of clarity and control in your life. But what is your double? It is your ethereal net. It is your bio field. It is your Taurus field. It is an ethereal net that is a luminosity that surrounds your physical body. This web of energy gets torn to shreds during daily living. Huge portions of it become lost or entwined in other people's bands of energy. If you lose too much vital force, you can become ill or die. So recapitulating is a breathing technique of remote viewing your past. And you will breathe in a certain way so that you it works both on the physical and ethereal levels. It will repair damage in your ethereal net and keep it strong and pliant. Recapitulation is part of a meditation program also. So what can your double do? Once you learn that it's time, you don't activate your double until it's time. And it is time for you, Lori. You're about to make the great crossing. You're having help. Follow the white rabbit. What does it do? Anything we want it to do. It can jump over trees, fly through the air, become large or small, take the shape of an animal. It can become aware of people's thoughts or become a thought and hurl itself in an instant over vast distances. It can even act like the self. If you know how to use it, you can appear in front of someone and talk to him as if you were really there, like Jesus did with his disciples. Being born again is something that was misinterpreted. Your born again self is an awakening of that other self. Your invisible, immortal self is the great crossing. So how do you activate your double self without hurting it? You have to meditate every day, collect power every day. Action is a prayer. Make your actions the action of collecting life energy, not death energy. Watch who you are around. Watch. We don't fight flesh and blood. We fight principalities and powers. Change your diet. Clean your house. Clean your car. Cleanliness is next to godliness. But mostly, you let go of your physical body, which is why her feet are in the water. You let go of this physical world, right? You realize that your ethereal self is immortal and is a time traveler and knows things that this physical body doesn't know, knows things that this physical world doesn't know.
So to let go of your physical body is to allow your double to take over. If our awareness is tied to the double, we are not affected by the laws of this physical world. Rather, we are governed by ethereal forces. But as long as awareness is tied to the physical body, our movements are limited by gravity and other constraints. Many people who practice martial arts don't just practice hurting someone in the physical. They practice hurting your ethereal net. They're very aware of your ethereal self. And there are many people and organizations who are aware. They are called the masters of the net. Jesus was one of them. He was the master of the water. The master of the water makes this shape. It's a net. And people who are part of these organizations often have symbols. So when you see the golden arches of the McDonald's symbol or the Marriott symbol with the knife that pushes over the two towers or Mickey Mouse, you will know who you're dealing with and what they know and who they are because they know about the mirror world. And that we live in a mirror illusion. So when you double this, it makes MW. This is called the jewel of the Nile. The jewel of the Nile is about the great crossing. The master that walks on water, the master of the net. Not getting trapped in the net. Now Jesus was a master of the net. He said, let us cast our nets and be fishermen of men. So when we're talking about the letter M, the golden arches that go like this, this is a curse. Curse of writing, curse, spelling, a spell. So when we're talking about angled edges or straight edges, there's a communication. Behind every pleasure and every pain is a sacred geometrical shape. And when you put a line through it, it's the star tetrahedron. This is water and fire, the divine marriage, flesh and spirit working hand in hand in the Holy Trinity, the Trinity of the Triketra, the Triketra that looks like a rabbit. And this is what was sent to you also. The Triketra is to be in the eye of the dragon. Now, your dragon wants to tell you something. You need to become invisible. You're going to balance action, thought, word, and emotion. You are nothing. You are zero point energy. And you're going to say every day, I am nothing and yet everything. I am no one and yet everyone. I am a mirror of God. If I am mirroring God, no one can see me because no one can see God. If I live in my zero point energy, I maintain joy. And my power as a co-creator of God is to take evil and turn it into good. If I see evil, I'm going to imagine a, a, a tetrahedron of fire over that area, and I'm going to, through my actions, turn evil into good. If I see that the dark ones are causing black magic by derailing trains, I'm going to go and buy a choo-choo train, and I'm going to make it a choo-choo train with a big light on it, and I'm going to let it run around my house everywhere, to defy this black magic that keeps trying to keep us tethered here. So we're going to be doing silly things, but we're going to maintain the heart of a child because only the child can enter the, the kingdom of heaven. That's how we maintain zero point energy. So to be in the eye of the dragon is to realize your action is a prayer. What you eat is a prayer. How you make your bed is a prayer. Cleanliness is next to godliness. A filthy house is a prayer that you are stuck and so cleanliness, clean your house, clean your car, clean your thoughts, clean your beliefs, clean your relationships, clean your diet. Your action is a prayer and your double will see it. Watch your thoughts. Seek first the kingdom of God. Behind every pleasure and every pain is a sacred geometrical shape. So imagine those shapes. Don't allow other people's energy to carbon copy onto you. We're becoming more telepathic as we grow our biofield and our spirit. You're going to start hearing and feeling other people's thoughts and feelings. And they will feel like it's from you. You will 100% feel like it's you. You will 100% feel angry and sad. 100%.
there will be no difference between you and somebody else. You will mirror the world and get their jerk energy and by extension their consequences or you will mirror God and be nothing and be clear and learn to transmute through that zero point centering, right? So now that you are learning about this triketra and following the white rabbit, making the great crossing from the physical to the spirit, um, not literally, but metaphorically, you're going to, you're going to have the resurrection stone. The resurrection stone has many meanings. Number one, you have to maintain zero point energy. Number two, you need to become an oracle. The oracle was written in the Bible 23 times. If any man speak, let them speak as an oracle. Number three, the resurrection stone is about resurrecting your past and breathing back the power that you gave away through recapitulation. Breathing works on both the physical and the ethereal levels to make your ethereal net strong and pliant. Now, eventually, once you collect enough power, you will start having downloads that are become more real and more and more real every day. You may be asked to teach. You may be asked to do many things to help others. The resurrection stone will also help you to resurrect other people's energy, thoughts, mind, and eyes, but only in the divine order of God. You do not help unless it's meant to be. To go out and help homeless people just because we have low self-worth and we want to be important and good comes from a foundation of fear. We don't, we are ruthless now. We don't help anyone unless it's meant to be by God because we don't fight flesh and blood. We fight principalities and powers. And right now we need to say namaste, her hands, we need to say namaste and don't touch people. You don't need to entangle your energy into other people's energy at this time. There was a time in the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s that maybe it was okay to hug everybody. Go to church. Love you, love you, love you, bless you, bless you. Not now. The age of Aquarius is that we are like mirrors. And if we're not careful, we will mirror someone who is a jerk and will have a hard time transmuting their energy off of us. So the ability to resurrect someone else's energies or thoughts or face or even speak to the dead is now your ability as an oracle, but you know, have to know how to use it in perfect harmony. The resurrection stone will turn into the philosopher's stone. As you study sacred geometry and become an alchemist, you'll begin to realize that everything in your life is talking to you. Everything on the outside and inside is a communication from your higher self. And then the resurrection stone turns into the philosopher's stone. And then you will get the divination wand. The divination wand is about knowing what is the voice of the physical world, artificial intelligence. And what is the, what is the message from God? Who is the black raven? Who is the white holy dove? And once you learn who is who, then you have mastered the Trinity. And Neo follows the white rabbit with Trinity. And Neo Anderson was on the train. And Neo Anderson has 11 letters in his name. And this is all an allegory of the truth, really. So this is called the Deathly Hollows, and it is about dying before you die. Jesus did it for you literally, so that we, go, we have to do it metaphorically. He created a timeline and a reality and a world where we don't have to do it literally. We do it metaphorically. We may look around and see that people are dying. But if you follow the masters of your double, your born again self, and the illuminated ones in Emerald City, the letter M, you as a master, you will realize that there is no death. Where Jesus said, Martha and Mary were like, kind of like, they were kind of like sarcastic jerks. They were like, hey, Jesus, Lazarus is dying. Hurry up and come over. And Jesus is like, hold on a second. I'm doing something. He's walking around. He shows up late. Lazarus died. Martha's pissed off. Martha says, um, hi, um, my brother is dead. Thanks a lot, Jesus. If you had been here, then my brother would not have died. 
And Jesus says, your brother will will rise again. Martha sarcastically responds and says, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet he shall live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? So she kind of was still sarcastic and she said, believe in what? He said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. On the account of people standing around that they may believe that you sent me, raise Lazarus, Lazarus raised up. So the Deathly Hollows is that although... We are surrendering our mental inventory. We are surrendering our emotions, our go-to victimhood, our bitterness, our anger toward this jerk world we came from. We're being asked to cross the river Styx to the jewel of the Nile. We are asked to surrender all that we are and trust. We are asked to enter into the halls of the gods. We are asked to become more than human. We are asked to raise our frequency, not just through thought, but through action. And to have fun with it. Maintain the heart of a child. Joy. Harry Potter has 11 letters in his name. And he died. The Dementors sucked his biofield. And it was his double time-traveling self, his illuminated self that created Expecto Patronum. Expecto Patronum comes from your happiest, most joyful thought. Joy is your strength. Even the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Expecto Patronum is your power. So anything that's a jerk in this world, transform it. So if you hear of wars going on, pretend it's a bunch of... um, little um, munchkins, uh, little um, tiny little um, people fighting with um, glitter and bells and things. And don't indulge in it. Let the dead bury the dead. Let the wars go on. This world will always have battles and wars. And what they want is to distract you. So take spiders, turn them into roller skates. Take a snake, turn it into a balloon. You have the power to take what is evil and turn it into good. So you've been anointed today and the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ones have seen you. You are a dragon mother, um, but you are more than that. You are a carrier of time. Possibly you can, uh, there's something about the people in your area or your realm that stops time. Um, And you lead people across the river Styx and feed them, not through mouth, but through them listening to the eternal ones, the eternal chalice, the birthing of the son of Newt. So these are very positive images for you, very positive communications for you. There's also communications that that, um, there's somebody holding a, a tuning fork. Oh. Yes, Um, get into frequency, frequency and sound. So you have a female and a male in a divine marriage. One is in a hall, the other is in the other hall. And this is a communication that you have a physical self in this world and a spiritual self that's in another. And they they have a divine marriage, flesh and spirit. And your original piece is about using your voice, singing um, light language. Um, This is an absolute message that you are part of the angels because there's a bird that's wings stretch across. Um, And what it does, these wings, they're, they're not just one angel though. You're connected to other people. So, so get into the Eastern religions. Thank you so much, you guys. Get into the Hamzas. Um, 
One Hamza that I love is this one. This is wind and fire. This is the Holy Spirit, Hamza. All right, the other one is this one. This one is um, water and fire. I think it's the divine marriage. Um, what other one is there? There's... Um, uh, not that one. There's this. This one. This one. Um, even th that book down there says that you um, you put one pinky in the air like this and you twirl your thumb like this and you imagine a golden light on like a parasol, a, a, um, a parasol. It's an ancient umbrella that the ancients used to um, do with their imagination to protect themselves and to bring down the 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 voice and the energy of heaven and so they used their hands they used their imagination and they used their double so it's not just your physical body doing it because your double needs your imagination you take that parasol and you oh that's what that is that's what that is you that that clock it spins it's like a parasol you take that parasol you spin it and um, you bring down the voice of the heavens coming down, manifesting on earth. You bring down heaven on earth. Boom. And you do it through imagination and maybe some hamzas and also your voice, according to your reading. But um, when we saw that you your feet were tethered, I would have to say just... We, we were groomed by artificial intelligence. They served their purpose. And now it's time for us to hear from the eternal ones. Um, and, and I think that that's the only thing that, that could possibly be tethering you is beliefs that are false. They're not true anymore anyway. They may have been true for a while, but not anymore. We've entered into a new world. The age of Aquarius isn't like the age of Pisces. We are mirrors now. And if I'm a mirror of light, then you're going to think of me and you're going to feel joy. You're going to become an oracle. You're going to be like, whoa, all of a sudden I feel this. I feel that because you thought about me. But if we are a jerk and we, we mirror darkness, we don't just hurt ourselves. We hurt others. That's what it's like in Aquarius. So it's our job and our duty to be a lighthouse for the lost souls at sea. But we never leave the island of our lighthouse. We never leave our zero point energy. We never go out to sea to save people. If they see the light and they come to the light and they climb the stairs and they become the light, they have to do the work. All we are is the light. And that's what angels do. Angels are ruthless. You could scream out there in the ocean, please help me. Lighthouses don't move. All we do is give you a light. And if you become illuminated, then you can come out of the waters of chaos and do the work to climb the, the lighthouse, become one with the lighthouse, and become a mirror of God. Otherwise, sorry, not sorry. And that's how it is. Because there's too many mirrors of darkness, and that is the black eye, and that is the AI. All right, and now I'm looking at your comments. Your mom prevented you from climbing the steps. So we have to let go of our family. My mother just had triple heart surgery, bypass surgery yesterday. And I don't feel led to be there or to partake of her energy. And that's what it's like to be in the age of Aquarius. Now, my entire life, I was led away from my mother. And my mother did things that reflected the black mirror time and time and time and time again. I gave her chance and chance and chance and chance and chance. And I was like a codependent, wanting so much to have the love of my mother. But ever since I was 11 years old, she abandoned, abandoned me for, for men who were very ugly. 
her, her self-worth was determined by a man. And so she was willing to throw me away for that. And I forgave her for it because there's a possibility that I was her. And that the seven generational curses is that we see our, who we were from an innocent perspective. And we look at ourselves and we judge ourselves. Man, my mother was a jerk. Man, my father was a jerk. I guess that means I was a jerk. So I'm not angry at all. I am, you are a mirror of who I used to be. I know how you felt because I used to carbon copy your energy onto me. I reflected who you were back onto you and I felt very much shame and ugliness for most of my life. In order for me to protect myself and become born again and rebirth myself as someone new, I am no longer me. I am half flesh, half spirit, and I am under the obedience of my immortal double self. And my immortal double self says, no, do not reconnect with the dead. Do not look back and do not allow those who follow death to, to entertain your consciousness. That, and the words of Jesus come back. If you don't hate your brother, your mother, your sister, even your own life, you cannot make it. He did say that. Yes, he did. And he called a woman a dog. She said, Lord, please save my daughter. And he said, I don't throw bread to dogs. What is the dog? The curse of, the, of Cain. They are the canines. The symbol of the curse of Cain is a dog. It's someone who is out of the eye of God. Dog spelled backwards is God. And she said, yes, but even dogs eat crumbs from the master's table. So since she was intelligent in some way, he went ahead and healed her daughter. But he did call her a dog. Think Jesus is kind? No. Think angels are kind? No. We either swim, follow the light of the lighthouse, climb the stairs, become the light, don't look back, or drown. And that's how they feel. And I want to remind all of you guys, I hear, I see you guys are having little arguments on here that I could be wrong. And if, and if you really feel like I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. That's fine. I don't mind being wrong. I feel the Holy Spirit speaks through me and I could be wrong. I feel that, that I am learning to become a vessel and a voice of the Holy Ones. And of course I could be wrong. Of course. However, it's okay to have a different opinion. My job isn't for you to believe what I believe. I'm not starting a church. I'm not starting a, a, a cult. <laughs> what I want to do is push you into you. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Your answers are within you. Your path is yours and yours alone. I want you to become powerful. I want you to hear from the invisible ones. I want you to become so adept that even I might come to you for answers. But for any of us, and I mean any of us, to be so polarized to say, this is the truth and there is no other truth. Be careful of those people. Those people are a full cup. They are not empty. Some people judge the Holy Spirit so harshly. They have not remembered all of the words of the Bible where the Bible literally says in the book of Romans, if the fire is above your head, there is no condemnation for anything you say or do, because it is not by you that is saying these things, but by the voice of the Holy Spirit, the invisible ones. Your double, the Holy Spirit, the seven spirits of God, they don't have a name. They are the nameless ones, they are the invisible ones, and their voice supersedes the written word and the law. Because even Jesus said, that the interpreters of the law of God are liars and vipers, Matthew 23. So I'm not telling you guys to believe what I believe. So don't worry about what I say. Worry about whether you are meant to be here or not. Worry about whether you are led divinely to hear my voice so that you can contemplate some things on your own in your own time and come to your own truth and hear, your, hear that invisible voice yourself, not from me. Don't have the habit of seeking outside of yourself. 
have the habit of seeking first the kingdom of God. And that is within you. So I could be wrong. Don't take some of my words that I'm being a jerk, like a narcissistic mother. Now, now, sit down and listen to me what I say, children. And you have to listen. And you can't have your own thoughts. Oh, no. You have to raise your hand to go to the bathroom also. Try to get up and walk around. Not in my classroom. That's not me. You know who I am? I'm like, go to the bathroom if you want to. You don't have to be here at all. Actually, if you want to sit here in color and and make funny things and not listen to me, I am so fine with that. You can learn in my classroom or not. You can show up or not. I give you no grades. I give you no attendance. You can come and go as you please, actually. And actually, if you feel led to come and teach, come and teach. Allow the voice of spirit to move your tongue. If you make a mistake, oh well. If you said something kind of out of line that wasn't on point, oh well. That's part of the game. We'll laugh with you or we'll just admit we can all be wrong. Oh well, we're just human, right? The classroom that's here is for those who are hungry for something that is invisible and hard to attain. Yeah, but the accusing spirit is not allowed. And the accusing spirit is someone who takes someone else's truth and instead of honoring or dismissing gently, points the finger and says, oh no, this is the one and only truth and that's my truth and I'm going to take your truth and I'm going to take you down and I'm going to disrupt your world by making you angry at me. And I'm going con- to connect my energy to yours and I'm going to keep you from Emerald City because I know the truth and the only truth because my preacher told me, because my mother told me, because my father told me. And this energy is a jerk and we will block you forever. You won't be allowed to come back here again because the accusing spirit is something that I had to deal with my whole life. It's like these religious people are like pointing their fingers. The hypocrite, you have to bow down to the hypocrite because if you don't bow down to them, they will hurt you like on Harry Potter. I don't bow down to the hypocrite. Um, I don't like myself when I'm a hypocrite. I don't like myself when I have the accusing spirit. I used to have the accusing spirit. Maybe sometimes I still get the accusing spirit. I don't know. Maybe I mirror people who have it and I'm like, oh, you. (laughs) I remember you. I remember when I didn't like you. Like here. So here I am. I'm singing a song at a place called Cerulean's and a place called Watercolor in Panama City Beach. And I'm singing some really sad songs. And I remember watching myself singing on stage and I was so egotistical. And I looked at myself and I'm like, I wanted everyone to love me. So I tried to be like this perfect singer and this perfect thing. But I, I was so full of ego so wrong about so many things and um that was something i had to purify the wicked witch is low self-worth and self-importance thinking that you believe something so strongly that there is no other truth that's the wicked witch and it's black magic so you could be a christian and practice black magic with your actions your thoughts and your words So, Lori, thank you so much for this reading. I very much enjoyed it, and I'm sure there's more to it. Look at that square. Look at that star tetrahedron right there in the center. What? You got some stuff going on. And then this is your second piece. This is a little clearer. Look at the first one. A little, a little, a little busy. A little, a little busy. Now here, it's clear. You're you're making the great crossing. But in order to make the great crossing, you got to let go. Once you let go, you're going to become the master that also helps people to cross. And and these two people, they're they're on a throne. The divine mother is a dragon with a beak. And the divine father is a man with a point, uh, a beard. 
which is really not a man, he says. Christ is did manifest as a man, but he's a place. He said, turn over a stone and there I am, cut a piece of wood and there I am. So we move from his energy of Pisces to Aquarius. And that's where we're going, y'all. The two towers. Ah ha ha ha! You guys are so cute. Ah, you just received a star crystal. Oh, I love that. My mom is a residential school survivor, so she's so resistant to relief. Yeah. She scared you as a child. I'm trying to help my kids to remember who, where, and it's hard. Um, the dark can never hide from the lights of love. Mm-hmm. Frequency controls reality. Dun 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 dun. I go invisible. I don't like. I'm. I don't like trying to be right. Oh oh oh. I'm gonna pen your comment. You get a present. I love your. I love your comment. Okay. What present are you gonna get? You get. Oh, you get a star. Look at you. And you get a ring. Oh, what? It's a turquoise emerald ring and a star. Keep a ring on your finger that reflects your divine marriage to your double and the invisible ones and begin to envision the star tetrahedron and carry stones in your pocket and talk to your to the stones. Have fun with your spirituality because once it becomes too serious, then it's boring and then you lose your inner child. And if your inner child can't laugh and dance and all of that, then ugh. it's like my granddaughter, she um, she has to go to, she's six years old. They make her sit for seven hours a day. And her teacher drinks Dr. Pepper all day. And is this dum, 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 kind of muggle. And my granddaughter's losing her spark. She's turning in, she's turning old. And she's only six years old because the air conditioning and the electronics in there is messing up her biofield. And, and sitting down seven hours a day, a child is supposed to be a creator. They're supposed to learn through creation, like building a treehouse. Oh, yes, you can learn sacred geometry through building things and making things and being curious and wanting that curiosity to blossom into a perfected being, to, to really love to learn. But when a child is forced to sit and memorize a piece of paper, come on, we're not robots. We're not robots. We don't remember certain things. We're never going to remember all this stuff. We need to be outside making things. We need to be doing things, growing things. We need to spend 90% outside, 10% inside. If I, if I were to reprogram this whole world, it would be different. I would be teaching kids to become masters like little Jedis. I would be ruthless in the sense that I wouldn't allow someone to um, take away a child's double and higher self that told the child to go sit in a tree and hear from the higher realm instead of coming to class. Anyone who said, no, that's, you can't do that, I would tell the child, yes, you should obey your higher self. Who am I? <sighs> yes, you can go to the bathroom, Yes. Allow the child to make their choices based on a higher spiritual concept. And then if you have a jerk child that's like, I don't want to do anything but play video games all day, then of course you're going to say, come here, you know, what do you choose? Do you choose to be a, a mindless being that d does things that gets you nowhere? Or do you want to actually make something in life and do things? You know, why are you here? Why are you even here type of thing? And you, at a certain precipice, children hear that and they, and they will choose and you let them choose. But this program that we're in right now tethers a child to artificial intelligence ways of doing things. And it does help. I mean, it's good to memorize what's five times five and then know it automatically. But you can do that without having to sit there all day. But unfortunately, we as parents have to go to work all day to work for food and water. And we're the only species that has to work for food and water. Oh, but God loves you. Yeah, not in this world. Not here. 
here, there is the, the children are not revered and honored or loved appropriately. Our spirits should be fed and they're not fed very well here, not even in our religions. So it's the children that we should worry about. But I could be wrong. Always got to say that. I could be wrong. <laughs> How do you get to know your spirit guides? Um, let's see. What is your name? So, Lori, I'm going to close you out and say thank you so much. Hopefully you feel better today. The anointing. Drink water also, please. Lots of clear spring water. Your, is your name Mandy? Oh, Amanda. Um, so how do you get to know your spirit guides? We're going to look at your spirit guides right now. Courage to ask such questions, Amanda, and see such answers. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, the earth is a little blue ball that you need to rise above and see it from a higher perspective through transmuting the energy of this world. You need to go through the divine marriage of flesh and spirit. You have all these rings. Um, some of these rings may, may reflect that you are married to ideas or things that you're giving your energy away to, and you should only have two rings, one for the physical body, one for your spirit. All these other rings are energies, uh, uh, this world that you're giving your energy to. So one, two, three, four, five. So let's see what's going on. Thank you, Spirit. Dump, dump, dump. If there's one thing in my life that's missing, it's the time that I spend alone. Staring at the clear and, oh, the blue and bright clear water. Kind of a special feeling out on the sea alone, staring at the full moon like a lover. Time for a cool change. I know that it's time for a cool change. And now that my life, it's so rearranged, I know that it's time for a cool change. Well, I was born on the side of water, and it's there that I feel my best, the whales and Albatross, they are my brothers. It's kind of a special feeling out on the sea alone, staring at the full moon like a lover. Time for a cool change. I know that it's time for a cool change. And now that my life so rearranged. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's time.
I've never been romantic And sometimes I don't care I know it may sound selfish But let me breathe the air Let me breathe the air Um, your higher self, your double is a white wolf and the white wolf is about the sun and you have a castle. So really uh, your higher self and the people who are looking over you and your double are connected to the seven kingdoms. So you have a castle on the crown up here and and the, the points of the castle make seven points. This is connected to the Merkaba and the angels of the Merkaba that control the seven pointed kingdom the points here in the letter MM. So you have a snake above your head and this reflects you and your double trying very fervently to get you to the letter M and this is the Emerald City and you learning to use your mind like a portal. So the snake is a symbol of the portal. Newt is um, controls the portals. She is outside of, or she is the gateway between the underworld and the upper world. And she has the snake that looks like the number eight. Portals open and close every eight seconds. And the reason the number eight is very important is because those of us who are under the seven curses of Cain are bound by the number seven. Seven continents, seven seas, seven days in a week. Seven colors to the rainbow. The seven wounds of Christ getting healed through the seven spirits of God, the seven kingdoms, the seven trumpets, the seven seals, the seven metals, seven musical notes. There were seven in lions in the den with Daniel, seven locks of Samson's hair. He forgives 70 times seven, seven deadly sins, seven wonders of the world. Just goes on and on and on. To get past seven is to go to the number eight. And eight is a secret portal that we open through our mind. And so the snake coming out of the third eye is a symbol of your consciousness coming out of your head, birthing and cracking like an egg, illumination coming in, your ability to see more than just behind your eyes, your ability to see out past yourself, out past pain, out past shame, out past ignorance, out past narcissism, out past hormones, out past all of it. And the ability to time travel and the ability to see past through these portals known as snakes is what is being said to you. So you have one hand on a butterfly. This is not just a butterfly. This particular butterfly has the number 33. It looks like a bumblebee. This is hearing the voice of God. You have very strong shoulders, very strong shoulders. And secretly behind you, there's a star. Secretly. And, um, and this person is pushing you into this star, the age of Aquarius, really. It's a star. It's called uh, Sirius B, the dog star. It's one of the brightest stars. And what it's doing is it's taking you to the Corona Borealis. And it's taking you to a time where you awaken and become illuminated through the crown and many other things. The age of Aquarius, the pot of water pouring out. And the wolf is also connected to the sun. And as the sun flips its magnetic polarity, you have a little mouse right here on your shoulder. And um, a little mouse on your shoulder reflects artificial intelligence. And um, artificial intelligence comes from Microsoft. So Microsoft is has a program called Mouser. 
and Lord Mouser. Um, the guy's name is Lord, and he's Mouser, and he is making nanotechnology, nanobots, to download your your memories, your consciousness onto an iCloud. So they often use our English language to um, to. So you can see this black stag. So the body of Christ is supposed to be a white stag. Let me show you what that looks like. <clears throat> the body of Christ is supposed to be this illuminated white stag. It's supposed to be white because it reflects purification. The black eye is artificial intelligence. It's called the black mirror. The white eye is our spiritual eyes. This is a black stag, but your white wolf is stepping on it. So that's good. It means that you're not allowing artificial intelligence to dominate you. The little mouse on your shoulder is a little warning because the white rabbit or its ears, it makes the letter M. The hat is coming off the rabbit and the Mad Hatter is about receiving downloads from the spirit realm. It's about the expansion of the mind. But it can also be a good symbol because once you get rid of the Mad Hatter, which is downloads that you've been receiving for a while that makes you feel mad, you exchange it for a crown. And so you, you, this crown is a promise of immortality. It is a promise that your consciousness no longer is tethered to reincarnation. You can literally live forever. I don't know if, if artificial intelligence is working with the gods, but I do know that Mouser... And the mouse and is the on the lifesaver um, is supposed to be saving our lives so that we have immortality. But the question that I have is, do we want to live forever here? Or do we have the ability to bounce to other realities where things actually work in our favor? Because currently, things aren't working in our favor. You could pray for somebody to be healed and it doesn't seem to be answered. And so a lot of children are abused here. Animals are abused. There's a lot of evil here. I wouldn't want to live forever and be tethered to a world that wasn't in my favor. If I could, if there was some kind of proof that the God that really wants us to be powerful and become like angels and reflect truth in life and live forever would prove like in some way that that artificial intelligence was supposed to play a role. Um, but there is something about you not looking at that mouse, a communication that no, don't take anything that is connected to artificial intelligence. Um, go through the, the illuminated ones. The illuminated ones are going to help you. So they're working with your crown at this time. They're very big. They're very, very, very big. I mean, that you wouldn't know or didn't know that they were there. It's like, what? Because they're huge, and you're in a huge star, so you are in the um, so you're in the serious be the dog star. So the way I can explain the dog, the star, to you, and then this coin that has the three hearts and the owl and the age of Aquarius and all of this stuff here is protect your solar plexus at this time. Protect your energy. Don't give your power away to just anyone because it's all an artificial intelligence distraction. So what you have to do um, is you're going to begin looking at symbology and, and now that you're entering the star, I'm going to tell you what the star actually means. Um, so as an allegory, we have to tell a story. Because it's difficult to understand. It's difficult for me to explain. So Harry Potter had a god. Or father. And he was named Sirius B. Black. The dog. This was an allegory that. For much of our lives. The real god. The God that wants you to awaken, be powerful, be joyful, have the heart of a child, live in peace. Your prayers will be answered. Everything works in divine order. You have support. You will want for nothing. You live in um, harmony. The real God was taken from us. And so the real God is in a prison. 
and Sirius Black, the dog, was in Azkaban. For 12 years. Now, Azkaban was a, t a tower that was a triangle that looked like this. And to be in a tower that that is a prison, we're talking about a clock tower. And this takes us to the body of Osiris. And so we were in the tower of Osiris. It's the male-dominated uh, world that that um, is all about the physical reality, the black eye, AI, basically. And when we are 12 years old, we leave the tower. So Jesus left the temple at 12. And Sirius Black was in the tower for 12 years. His number of his prison number was like 903. It was 12. So this number 12 is about 12 hours, 12 months, 12 zodiac signs. At a certain precipice, we unlock God out of the cells of our very body, the true God. And so Sirius B is a dog star. And this dog star takes us out of the curse of Cain, and which is the canine, the dog. And the curse of Cain is a prison. And the curse of Cain was because of the Cain and Abel's. Could possibly be that in our past life we were cannibals. Something about feeding off of things we shouldn't have fed upon or something. I don't know. So anyway, it doesn't matter. At 12 years old, this pointed at 12 o'clock, we go to 13. And 13 is the master. So Jesus left the temple at 12. He came back to the Bible finding 12 disciples. Jesus plus his 12 disciples is 13. That's a coven of witches and wizards. The witches and wizards are not black magic. They are masters who follow God, but you can call them oracles because the oracle was written in the Bible 23 times. If any man speak, let them speak as an oracle. A master who walks on water knows that we have a bio field that looks like the letters MW and that when we're stuck down here, we're in the water. When we're up here, we're in the real world. We're down here, we're, the in, we're in the illusion. So, Azkaban in Gematria actually parallels with prison planet. So we were on a prison planet and a program, really. So when Harry Potter let his god and father out of Azkaban prison, who where he was falsely accused, this is an allegory of your god and father finally showing themselves to you and helping you into your mastery outside of the realm of time and outside of a prison where you couldn't hear them, see them, and they wouldn't even respond to you. And it made you very upset. So now that the God and Father, you are in the star, you are actually activating God within your very cells of your body. You are becoming illuminated through this blazing star. And this star is activating your heart chakra, and it is... Um, bringing forward the invisible ones, which is, which yours is a white wolf and a very, very tall male. I'm surprised that it's not female, but it looks male to me, male spirit guide. And this particular spirit guide is, um, um, they have a net over their hat and they are the masters of the net. They are teaching you to become a master also. They have secret symbols all over them. And anyway, hearing the voice of God and watching what you eat. So you have a, um, the, um, so there's a strawberry, there's a, a, a red raspberry, hormone issues, vitamin K. Um, okay, so uh, your holy temple is um, is connected to your spirit. So if our holy temple has allergies or if we're not fed proper minerals, if we are not sun gazing, if we're not following and looking into negative ions, if we are drinking too many sodas and eating too much sugar and smoking weed or drinking alcohol, then 
then then we are literally depleting power and we are we're using up so much of our power that we're not able to hear what's actually going on so vitamin k is something for you and red raspberry leaf and non bread you should be eating non bread in a u n you should be eating non bread instead of bread don't eat regular bread don't eat bread that has you know what bread is it's glue do you know how to make glue flour and water that's glue uh, we're not supposed to be eating glue it's too sticky so you need to um change your diet a little bit you need to drink tea here's the word tea so change coffee to hot tea um you're going to take 1 teaspoon of olive oil every day extra virgin olive oil Extra virgin olive oil has vitamin K and vitamin E. It's really good for your blood. When you drink tea, you might want to drink some red raspberry tea. And then you're going to want to switch out like iodized salt with Himalayan sea salt. Himalayan pink sea salt has over 84 minerals. It's really good for your, your, your ions in your body. Please research negative ions and positive ions and how to avoid positive ions. And the 84 Himalayan uh, minerals are really good for you. And something about your hormones. So something's distracting you from hearing your double, and it has something to do with food and drinks. So drink spring water. I'll give you a little tip. Go to Amazon. Get this Q-Test 11. You urinate on it. It gives you an answer within one minute. It tells you. Are you dehydrated? Is your pH acidic? Because dehydration and an acidic pH is the foundation of mental and physical health. And we need to drink clean spring water daily. Take a teaspoon of olive oil daily. If your pH is acidic, you can raise your pH by getting pH pills or you can mix a little bit of baking soda with a little bit of water every night and take one sip of it. It will raise your pH to become more alkaline. People who have bipolar disorder, people who are emotionally distraught, they have no idea it's because they are acidic and they're, pe and they're dehydrated. Now your glucose plays a role also. Your sugar should be balanced. You should avoid sugar at this time. Focus more on salty things, but don't eat too much salt. Drink plenty of water. And eat nuts. Almonds are really good. They're seeds. If you're allergic to nuts, you can still eat almonds. Um, fruits, chocolates, dark chocolate, not milk chocolate full of sugar. And make yourself some hot tea with honey. Honey will make you an oracle. Did you know that the ancients used to feed their children honey to make them become psychics and oracles? Drink hot tea with honey every day. And it'll help you to hear your higher self. You have very big higher selves. They're huge. It's like, why can't you hear them? Like, what? Now, they're going to teach you to become a master of the net. This is you getting into sacred geometry. This is you. Um, using your willpower and your intentions. From something than, than what you used to use it for. If we used to indulge in this world, in other people, and even in our own emotions, we're going to switch. And we're going to start being creative. We are going to learn to strengthen our, our spiritual muscles by connecting to the life form or the thought form of God. This is sacred geometry. This is the master of the net. It's called the net of jewels. It is the spirit core of you. Those who are the master of the net want you to enter Emerald City. Auntie M. And this is the imagination. Imagination. This is the invisible world. And they want to talk to you. In order to talk to them, you have to clear and block all negative energy. Mostly it starts with your holy temple. You need to be hydrated. You need your pH to be balanced. You need to eat some vitamin K. This is you getting enough sunshine. Gold, the grid of life design. 
When you imagine this tetrahedron over your head, it is the number four and it reflects fire. And it's a luminous gold. If you're too serious about your imagination, you will kill your inner child and your inner child is the one who has all the power. So let your inner child giggle and have fun imagining orbs over your head, but don't limit your inner child. If you're like, oh, you can only imagine gold, let your inner child imagine all kinds of colors. And you can switch it to gold, to white, to blue, to purple, or whatever. But the grid of life design is about having fun and integrating gold and white energy. Eventually, it'll shift to gold if your inner child allows it. So you're going to imagine a, an orb above your head, above, over your shoulder, in front of your shoulder, here, and here and back. Now, let your inner child make these as big as they want. And if you want, if your inner child wants that star, that, that, um, I'm sorry, that tetrahedron to be as big as your house, let them. If they make it as big as your city, let them. Or your country, let them. Or the world, let them. But then put a triangle below you to protect you. And then you have created a Merkaba. Oh my, wonder what would happen if you do that. Well, you activate your cave of Brahma. You are activating thought forms of God. You are learning to release the material and focus a laser light on the spiritual world. You are going to not be tethered to gravity anymore. You will learn about the higher world and the lower world and how they work and interact together. You might learn that every human has the ability to affect the material world via sacred geometry. So you might start getting into sacred geometry, doing it physically with your hands, creating mandalas, and then with your imagination. We are, we are, um, we have a flame that ignites above our head. That's the Holy Spirit. And we become twice born. It's called being born again. We are the crown of creation. We are asleep, but we must awaken divine con consciousness and work our spiritual muscle. We have to merge with higher forms of consciousness and activate all our just sacred geometrical shapes within our energetic field. See, your chakras look like tornadoes. They look like little tornadoes. To have your Taurus field or your bio field to get sucked into a tornado is being stuck in a chakra. So we begin to focus inward like a laser point and you begin to see a sun inside the cave of Brahma, which is inside your head. And you begin to push that light outward like a radiant sun. And you make it so large that in fact, one day your inner child goes, let's envelop the world with it and see what happens. And bam, suddenly we understand that we have the ability to change, change evil into good through our imagination. And only the child has that ability. So it's your inner child that you allow to dance and to imagine silly things. But these silly things are empower were very, very powerful. So you are the crown of creation. You are the Christ consciousness. And we have to work these energetic muscles through zero point centering. And so we start getting into understanding our Taurus field, octahedron, <clears throat> how these Merkabas are connected to the four elements. <coughs> Excuse me. And how your soul travels in the Merkaba. So your imagination is quite pivotal when it comes to accessing heavenly truths. The double dodecahedron is very powerful. It is the union of heaven to earth. So when you imagine the double dodecahedron, you are actually uniting heaven to earth. Misuse of sacred geometry will send you back to forgetfulness. It is not okay to misuse it for your own will. You always do the will of God and awaken to that truth. So I could be wrong about all these things that we learned today. All the truths are within you, not me. I'm only here to bring a telepathic vision, like a television of truths, so you can see your body language. You're looking west. That's good. That's the face of God. You're looking away from the mouse. That's good. You have the mouse ears on your head, though. This is using, you, you are our AI. So you're, you're not going to avoid that, but 
it is the letter M. You have one, two, three, which is the triketra. But the, the fourth petal that you're birthing is your ability to, to remote view and be an oracle and be psychic. You're speaking. So look at and take a picture of all of this because this is all major communications for you. You're entering into Sirius B, the dog star, which means your ability to hear God is going to be released from the cells of the prison of your body. Take a picture. Now notice one, two, three, four, like the four-petaled flower. Be careful about people touching you. Your spirit guide is saying be careful. Say namaste. <laughs> because right now we are entering into the 11th house. This is the water pouring out of the pitcher. And we are like mirrors of each other. And if we're not careful, we can carbon copy other people's energy onto ourselves. And if we're not careful, we will actually suffer their consequences. So think about how Harry Potter wouldn't stop thinking about Voldemort. And everybody warned him. Number one, Harry Potter stopped looking into the mirror of the past and how, and how Voldemort killed your parents. Two, stop thinking your father was the one who saves you. You're the one who saves you. It's your double born again self that saves you your top double born again time traveling self right three stop thinking about Voldemort and saying that Voldemort is in heaven so stop thinking about the, the past the muggle world and what a jerk it was enjoy this new world he wouldn't suddenly he started to see through Voldemort's eyes and he started to feel Voldemort's anger and selfishness before you knew it, Harry Potter was having nightmares and seeing exactly what Voldemort was doing. And this was not good. So S Professor Snape said, hey, focus, Harry. You must focus. Don't allow yourself to think about that world and that place. I would have said, Harry, forgiveness is not a kind act. Act. If you want to kill Voldemort, kill him out of your mind and burn his memory forever. And then he won't ever affect you or infect anyone here. He won't be able to survive because no one will believe in him. But he refused. He kept saying, Voldemort's here. And I feel so angry all the time. Yeah, of course you do. You don't know how, how to direct your thoughts, Harry. Yes, you're a powerful wizard, but you're kind of a jerk because you won't stop. And everyone is telling you to stop and you won't. Right? So... Because he was such a powerful wizard, he won. Oh, good. You're right, Harry. You're right. Voldemort is here. We were wrong all along. <laughs> when really, he would have never come if, if Harry Potter would have just shut up. Seek first the kingdom of God, and then all the things you want will be added unto you. And you won't have to go through a second death like Harry did. Think Harry was the hero? Mm -mm. He created a war. Many people died. He brought Voldemort back to life, eventually defeating Voldemort. But none of that had to happen if he would have just learned to forgive. Or if somebody would have said, if you don't stop, you're going to die. If you don't stop, many other people that you love are going to die. If you don't stop, we will have a virus and we will all have to go out and live in tents and put a spell over us where we live alone and no one can come near us because we are all being affected and infected by that dark energy that you brought, Harry Potter. But no, Harry Potter was the hero. Oh, you're such a hero. No, he wasn't. He should have just forgiven and let go and killed Voldemort out of his mind forever. And that's how we handle it. That's what we do. Yeah, I mean, like even hating or something. I had anger yesterday. And, um, you know, when I read for people, it's, I'm telling you, we're in a mirror reality now. And if we don't learn how to transmute appropriately, we're going to start adopting each other's anger. And it's almost impossible to defeat this mirroring other people. But uh, there are some tricks. Number one, don't touch people. Say namaste. We don't fight flesh and blood. We fight principalities and powers. Some people are dominated by reptilians and archons. They don't know it. They're young. 
they have to grow out of it. But um, anyway, realizing that these metaphors of Harry Potter and Dorothy and Jesus, they're all the same story. So Dorothy and Harry, both of their names have 11 letters. Dorothy Gale, Harry Potter. Both of their parents died. Both of them lived with their aunts and uncles. Both of them left the letter M-U, Munchkin Muggle. Both of them had to fight a reptilian wicked witch or a reptilian Voldemort. Both of them went to a mansion, Emerald City, Hogwarts. Both of them had to find how to overcome the number seven. Seven Colors to the Rainbow or the seven book series of Harry Potter with the seven Horcruxes. Both of them had a dog. This is Toto or Sirius Black, the dog. They are all allegories. And they are all communications that is the never-ending story. So they, the, both movies or both shows or both books are numerically the same as the Bible when it comes to Jesus. 11, 12, 13. So when you look at Dumbledore's vault and it says 713, this is a communication that he followed the number 11. He followed the white rabbit. 713 equals 11, but it ma means that he became the master 13 that dominated the number 7. And the train that equals 5, the five-pointed star. Sirius B, the dog star. Sirius Black, the dog. Who's Draco Malfoy? Oh, he's the Draco star system. Oh, he's a threat. Yes. But what we don't know about that show or that story is that Draco was actually the one who loved Harry the most. Oh, but he was a jerk. Lose your mother and father, did you, Harry? Afraid of Dementors, are you, Harry? Yes. He was trying ruthlessly to get Harry to stop fearing and stop bringing that fear. And he was ruthless because Harry couldn't stop. He wouldn't stop looking back. And the ruthless ones are the ones who push you into Emerald City. So, or Hogwarts or um, Everlasting Life or whatever. So, um, yeah, these stories are all the same. Jesus Christ has 11 letters. He left the Bible at 12. Then he became a master that walks on water. Jesus plus his 12 disciples is 13. 13 is a coven of witches and wizards. Harry was a wi wizard. Dorothy was a witch. They're all the same story. Mm. Yep, and you and you say, oh, well, it was just this this guy who wrote it who didn't know anything, or she didn't know what she was writing. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. There's people who know, and they knew. There's no way that they could numerically exactly make seven Horcruxes and seven book series and Harry Potter having 11 letters and all of the uh, the, num the number on the train, the number on the vault, the allegory, all of it. Mm -mm. No, these are masters who have already mastered and they, they wrote these stories to awaken humanity. It's called the power of myth. And the power of myth is very strong. Doesn't mean that it's not true though. Yeah, there's no coincidences for sure. So I hope you enjoyed your reading, Amanda. Actually see that you're 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 going through a purification. You're beginning to hear God. You do have one little mouse on you, but it's more a matter of you being physically healthy and having vitamin K and ions and not drinking or not eating bread. Uh, switching bread for non-bread. Non-bread, I think, doesn't have gluten or something in it that's affecting you. Mm -hmm. So platform nine and three quarters. So the number nine is the, mas is the master number. Um, um, okay, I'll explain nine and three quarters to you guys. Um, Nine and three quarters. Let's do a choo-choo train. Okay. 
The allegory of the choo-choo train is that we are all following the number 11. Whether it's the 11 letters of Jesus Christ and his name, Harry Potter has 11 letters, Dorothy Gale has 11 letters, Neo Anderson has 11 letters, White Rabbit has 11 letters, Emerald City has 11 letters. This number 11 is very much connected to the sun. So the railroad track or the train reflects the number 11, the two tracks. You cannot get off that track. You will not be able to fight or hide from the, how the sun flips its polarity every 11 years. And that this purification process is following the white rabbit, but also following the white smoke of the train. And the white color is the the number 11, which is the element of salt. And the object is to find Aquarius from the 12th house, which is district 12, 12 hours, 12 months, 12 zodiac signs, which is a clock that illuminates into our eternal body like a light on a train to the 11th house, which is the number 11 here. It's 1111 there. So this is an angle and the angle is called the angel. And the purpose of an angel is to help all of us to see through a 45 degree angle. The 45 degree angle is sacred geometrical shape that says, okay, you see through the eyes of your, of your physical body. And you've learned a lot there. Great job. But now try seeing through the eyes of spirit. And so the ability to see below and above is a 45 degree angle. So the 45 degree angle is a a communication of the angels that have contacted you. Ready to go through the divine marriage. The ring of power. Your body. Marrying spirit. Spirit dominates flesh. And the choo-choo train is a dimensional train that will lead your mind to different dimensions. 45 is the number nine. It is someone who is eternal and lives forever. It is a master number. Three quarters is many things. It's really the number seven, but it is about um, how the number seven is, can be chopped up into, um, um, a, a division. So it's 0.75, you know, three fourths is 0.75 and it is the number seven and it is, um, three quarters. So three quarters is the triquetra. It's the white rabbit. It's three pieces of four. So the eternal flower is four pieces. It's the cross. And when we are entering into the realm of the white rabbit, we follow the white rabbit by following nine and three quarters. This is the angels, the angles that help us to see at a 45 degree angle, who is taking our fourth heart chakra and the Trinity. Now, so notice that Neo Anderson from the matrix, he has 11 letters in his name, right? He followed the white rabbit because of Trinity. Trinity was the one who brought him into the, out of the matrix, right? The Trinity, the angles, one, two, three, the Trinity. So, so to get to, um, platform nine and three quarters, you have to have your fourth heart chakra open and you must follow the Trinity. And that is the white rabbit. I'm going to tell you exactly what this means. So you've been born again. You've allowed spirit to dominate the flesh. You can hear the spirit world. You're boarding the new train. You're following the number 11 as the sun flips its polarity to the 11th house. So now you've entered the the train. You're going to a place that most humans can't see. And this is literally a communication of what happens to you in sacred geometry. You have a physical body. It looks like a ring of power. You've been born again. You have a visible self and an invisible self. Many of us learn to stay in the eye of the needle and go through a many, many awakenings in order, like an embryo, to birth the third self. The third self is about you having the ability to travel your mind outside of your body and a myriad of other things. So this is the triquetra. The first symbol that you created is the vesica, piscis. When it's pointed down at six o'clock, 
you go through the baptism of water. When it turns to the left, you are in the belly of the whale. You're fighting flesh and spirit. When it goes to 12 o'clock, where Jesus left the temple at 12, it goes to the fire. This is the baptism of fire. Water and fire come together to make steam, the steam of the train. The Holy Spirit manifests within the flesh. The crystallization of Christ's consciousness within you. Basically, a promise that the real God has been let out of the cells of your body and you are no longer in a prison. So here's the Triketra. The Triketra is the white rabbit Neo. And it is about three quarters. It is about three fourths. Because your your eternal self is the four petaled flower. And there's a piece missing. And you have to go to Hogwarts to get that piece. It's a, it's a school of learning. You've basically entered the Egyptian Book of Gates. So the Egyptian Book of Gates is a boat. <laughs> and the boat is an ark. And the ark is the ark of your Taurus field. It's called Noah's Ark. It's Emerald City, Anti-M. And once you enter that school of learning, you will be given a spirit guide that's an animal that's on the ark. And then it's a mansion of many rooms. Jesus said, my father's house has many mansions. So Emerald City, Hogwarts, or even Cinderella having to be back by 12 o'clock and going to her mansion. These are all allegories of the letter M, which is the mansion. When you go to this mansion, you're going to go through the mirror. You're going to go through magic. You're going to go through magnetism. You're going to become the master that walks on the letter W, which is water. And so this is 33 facing each other. Jesus died at 33. You have 33 vertebrae in your spine. And the number three is the Trinity. So nine and three quarters will eventually go to the number 10 once you find the missing piece. The missing piece is the divine marriage, flesh and spirit. And then... The petal, the four petaled flower. Um, I don't know everything about this one. It's the four vesica piscuses. I do know that when you're going through the Trinity, it's about pink, blue, and gold, balancing flesh and spirit, and being led by a spirit guide like a rabbit. It's about a purification when you're here. This is about balancing. So when you're on the boat and you've been given the white rabbit as a spirit guide, you are learning to use your mind to hear God. You're becoming a diviner. You're beginning to hear magic, magical things, miraculous things. So first you're going to let your black raven off the boat and go, hey, is this true or is this true? Because this came from the black eye of my physical world and my physical body. But I'm not really sure if that was true or not. Well, when you begin to see fully through the eyes of the Spirit, you let your white um, holy dove free. And the white holy dove is always invisible behind all things, which is the three-fourths triketra. She's always the holy dove there and has always been there. And she finds the olive branch. So the the four-petaled flower is the ankh, It is the baptism of water meets the baptism of fire and eternal life, the infinity symbol. It's the cross. It means that you have always lived forever, but you were plucked like a flower. It's like, um, and so this eternal flower is like the movie Tangled. Someone took your power. They knew you were the eternal flower. They kept you in a tower and they didn't want you to leave that tower. The tower is a prison. It's Azkaban. It's a prison. Do you know what Magdalene means? Magdalene means tower. Did you know that? Emerald City, letter M. Magdalene means tower. And she's mentioned in the Bible 12 times, like a clock tower. And so Mary Magdalene is about an invisible place. It's your true home. And so when your white holy dove finds the olive branch, you found the number four and now you're a true master, not of your, of that you are, it's, it's that you are now, your mind is squared. Your emotions are squared. Your mirror reflects God. 
your emotions, your zero point energy. You have learned through those invisible teachings how to find your way home, Dorothy, and to get over the seven colors of the rainbow and to leave the old world behind. So that was a long-winded way of explaining nine and three quarters, but the truth behind nine and three quarters is about the compass and the square. Squaring your emotions in your mind to allow the sun to dominate artificial intelligence, which is the black pupil of your eye, through following the white rabbit, the number 11, and the triketra, which is three of four petals that looks like a white rabbit, and the number three, which is the trinity, and the number four, which is your fourth heart chakra, which is green, which is Emerald City. The number nine is the master of all. The angles, the angels that um, want you to see at a 45 degree angle. Um, anyway, that's my temporary take on it. I just blocked somebody. Um, you guys, um, if you guys are like really mean on this, on this page, um, and have like the accusing spirit or whatever, you're just going to be blocked forever. So just, you know, we just don't have time. And I've always told you guys I could be wrong about some of the things that I'm learning, but I, I love having fun with these. I don't care if I'm wrong. I, I'm having fun. I hope you guys are having fun too. Somebody who's really grumpy and steps into the room and starts being really mean. Some people should just be muted, but some people need to be blocked forever. I don't ever want them back here again. I never want to talk to them again. So I just block them. You really took off my nine and three four scarf that you said nine and three four. Are you serious? Jam that jammy, that is so cool. I love that. Yeah, I have nine and three quarters somewhere. Oh, where do I have my nine and three quarters? Um, I think I have it on a hat somewhere. Let me see. Nine and three quarters, nine and three quarters. See, I have this hat. It has some things on it. It has a compass on it. No. Oh, yes. Was it? No. Oh, no. It's here. Isn't it here? Does it say nine and three quarters somewhere? No. I have something that says nine and three quarters. I don't know where, though. Ha <laughs> ha. So salt is uh, the 11th element on the periodic table is salt. And salt is about um, um, <clears throat> uh, transforming from lead to gold or from black to white, from the black pupil of the eye to the white eye. And it's all about a purification process. In alchemy, they, they say, oh, the colorful peacock turns into the white peacock. The black elephant or the gray elephant turns white. And so even in Hinduism and in the Eastern religions, they all know about the white stag, the white elephant, the white unicorn, the white rabbit, all being a process of awakening and purification. Yes, jerks will be muted or, de or deleted. Don't be jerks. Oh, thank you so much, Heather. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. I know there's a whole bunch of jerks on here. Some people are really grumpy. They're just dehydrated. They need to go drink some water. So, um, yeah, I've got to um, go potty and take a break, and I'm going to be having another reading. When is my second reading? Oh, my. Oh, I was already supposed to have it. It was at 1 o'clock. I forgot. I thought it was 2. I better call her. Okay, so i got to go. I'll be back here in about 10 minutes. Okay, thank you guys for being here. Bye.